Hi, this is Janos, it's Reverb Audio. <laughs> this is my third time trying to record this video. Maybe uh, let's see how successful I'm going to be <laughs> with uh, recording anything. So today I'm answering a question of uh, Herman and he asked about, uh, he said, can you share your design and construction for a good DIY power cable? And uh, technically I can't. And, and not because I'm in, in, incapable of doing that or, or I'm really mean about it, but because of liability. Uh, you know, when I suggest an interconnect, if, if you mess that up, then the worst that can happen is that you uh, blow your speakers or, or short your amps input stage or, or you, you know, burn out the output buffer of your streamer or your DAC or, or uh, preamp. So basically you can ruin elements in your stereo system. If you are unfortunate, you can burn out everything at, at one go. Uh, but uh, when you mess something up with a power cord, then, then that's not what, that is not the worst of your worries that you will lose, you may lose your cherished CD player or, or streamer or, or whatever phono stage. Um, if you mess up the power cord, then what can happen? Your home burns down. Maybe even your neighbor's homes burn down. You can kill yourself. You can kill other people, children, pets. And uh, so basically you are going to serve time for it, your mistake. And, and if you think that's such a remote possibility, just think about the fact that every year in the United States alone, more than 100,000 homes burn down due to electrical fires every year. 100,000. You don't want to be one of these 100,000. And that's why I'm not recommending any DIY power cords for anyone because it's a huge liability and my channel is for fun. I am not here that I, I lost my family and, and my whole neighborhood because I built something based on what Janos recommended. I'm not going to, you know, to go to jail along with you or I'm not going to be the scapegoat of any of that crap. So <laughs> that's why I'm not giving any recommendations for power cords if you, if you, if you, because uh, for that, you really need someone to, to supervise you to be there if you have never done that. Uh, you know, if for those of you who are uh, experienced with building your power cords, you've made a dozen of them and you just want the best DIY recipe, I would wholeheartedly recommend uh, a good recipe for you what I'm doing, but it's not only you who are going to see that, but uh, uh, thousands of others potentially. And amongst those thousands of people, there will be at least one who will execute it in a fashion that he will burn his own home down because of the mistake that he makes. And when he makes that mistake, he won't be even aware that he's making a mistake. And maybe even if that mistake is something uh, not so bad uh, that, that it's, it's, it's immediately life-threatening, uh, but because of many homes have seriously defective electrical wiring that you as the person who are renting the home you are not even aware of, because of those defects, uh, what you are doing, that little mistake in the power cord that would normally just trip a circuit breaker, it won't trip your breaker when you have problems, but it will start an electrical fire. So that's why I'm just really extremely reluctant to, to give any kind of plans. Uh, and I just recommend to get anything that's UL approved, that's safe, and uh, better be safe than sorry, and, uh, and, and that's it. Uh, but if you have built already dozens of power cords, and, and, and you know what you are doing, then, um, I, I, then you can relate to what I'm going to say now is that uh, for the cable and just use something uh, solid, something uh, properly made, like here in the United States, 
basically the lowest uh, grade you, um, connectors uh, plugs that, that you can get, IAC ends, are the Levitons. And uh, then if you, that, that's, that's good enough, it will be already better than a, a, a basic molded power cord, much better than that. If you want something better, go for the Marinko ends. And then if you want even better than the Marinko, you can go for the Wadgate. And, and there is like, uh, the, it, it gets better and better each step, but these are kind of compatible with each other. So if, if you want, just go, uh, if, you, if you have very little money to spend, just go with the Leviton ends and then just upgrade one, one by one, go for a Marinko, and then you can end up with, with Wattgate ends as well. And just make sure that you get the real thing not those uh, cheap Chinese knockoffs that you get on eBay because you, you think, oh, this Wattgate end, it costs like $120, but uh, check it on eBay and, oh, you can get it for $40. I get the eBay version. That, that's not the same thing. That's something very different. On the outside, it looks very, very similar, but if you have both, they, they're nothing alike when you, when, you can, uh, when you hold both in your hands. But if you don't have, you just have the cheap knockoff. You think you got the real deal, but no, it's not. It's much more flimsy. And, and actually the real thing, the real difference doesn't show, which is the quality of the base metal and the quality of the plating, which in these knockoff copies is, is pure junk. It's, it's, it's really, really low quality. So, so don't get the, the knockoff Wattgate, rather just get a proper Marinko and instead you will be better off with that because with these knockoffs with the poor quality base metals, the sound will be nervous. So you will feel that, that the sound is unbalanced and, 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 and that's how you can describe what it does to the system that it makes the sound nervous and unbalanced. You will get more top end, you will get more detail level, but you won't like it. And, and it won't be like an overall better sound on the long term. On the short term, you will feel some benefits, but on, on the long term, that nervousness will really be a, a party pooper. And uh, so what do you put between the ends? And uh, no, no, that, that's the difficult part because depending on where you live, you might get very access to very, very different kinds of wires, metals, etc. And uh, so what I think is more important than what you get is how, what is the configuration that you are using. What I noticed for power cords, the best is to keep the conductors separate from each other, have physical space between them. Don't twist them together, don't hold them too close together, have them like uh, run like uh, freely. I, I let my, my, my conductors run freely at some spaces where they can go like they can go like an inch or two inch separate from each other, but they are not hard tied and they are not in physical proximity to each other. And the other thing uh, that is important, what I have noticed, is to keep them as short as possible. Don't use like meters, several meters long. Uh, try to use as short as possible and avoid the one meter length or any multiples or fractions of one meter. So avoid one meter, 0.5 meter, 25 centimeters or the other way, avoid two meter, four meter, eight meter lengths. D d d don't because these are the best antennas to pick up our RF and EMI of your devices that you own at home. So try to go for, let's say like 1.5 meters or, or like uh, 70 centimeters, 35 centimeters, three meters. These are the length that, that you want to use. And, uh, and what you can do uh, is, is, for example, what I did behind me uh, uh, where I'm, pointing with my finger about that height where I, now I'm showing there. So behind my equipment racks at that level, that's where my IEC outlets are. So that's where my AC outlets are. I have four dedicated separate lines for my, my stereo 
and uh, and I can run just minimal length power cords to to uh, to my gear. And for example, there is my deck where my thumb is pointing, and and the deck it has I think like a like a 35 centimeter long power cord. That's it. <laughs> and. Uh, and so that it's just barely from from the outlet to the back of the deck. That's it. And and I'm there. I'm you. What I'm doing there is I'm, I have I think one end is a marine code, the other end is a watt gate. I think the one that goes to the wall is a watt gate, uh, a silver plated watt gate. The other is a marine code, and and in between, it's uh, it's silver. That's a uh, antique. Uh, uh, sterling silver. If you are buying modern made wire, I don't recommend sterling, I recommend 3N silver. And if you purchase it, the price difference between sterling silver and 3N silver is absolutely negligible. You won't even notice it. So go and get the 3N silver. 4N silver, it's like the price jump is just hyper massive compared to the 3N silver. Don't waste money on that. Just go for 3N silver. What will make more difference is the uh, annealing of, of, the, of, the, of the silver. Go for dead soft anneal silver. And uh, that's going to make the biggest difference. And, and sterling silver is the hardest of them all. But why am I using it? Because my sterling silver has been drawn over half a century ago and the uh, metal had time to recrystallize. Because when they draw the wire, it undergoes through severe stress, which results in broken domains within the wire. And with time, those those breaks that can recrystallize, stabilize, and uh, and normally I I really don't like uh, newly drawn sterling silver. It has a really cold sound, and and when people are talking about I don't like the sound of silver is too cold, too sterile, clinical. That's what they're talking about. That's the sound of sterile silver or hard anneal 3N or silver. Uh, so, so that's it. Uh, but if you have like, if you can get like a really old antique batch of uh, sterling silver, you get my thumbs up for that. If not, then just go for present made silver. I had uh, this uh, antique silver that was about uh, 18 gauge wires and I have multiple wires and multiple conduct wires for each conductor, each leg of the conductor plus and minus and used as many as I, as I could push through a quarter inch fish tank hose. So that's my insulator that I'm using in my power cord fish tank hose and I put as many <laughs> silver wire as fit in a quarter inch uh, thick inner diameter fish tank hose. It's, it's, it's really really rigid very very hard kind of like that that it, that tiny power cord doesn't bend anywhere. It's 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 pretty brutal, and and it it has like a total gauge of uh, I forgot how much, but it's 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 really really rough. Something like gauge eleven or gauge ten, something like that. And uh, and 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 that one, uh, that's uh, one of the best power. Actually, that's by far the best power cord I heard in my system. I uh, just like uh, it, it really just um, wow well, it's, it's like it really topped every commercial power cord that, that I tried so by, by a really wide berth and uh, but I don't recommend that uh, especially if you live in Europe that, that fish tank hose insulation I think it, it, it's insufficient for 240 watts here in the US for 120 watts you may swing it but I don't recommend it. If you do it, that's your own responsibility. Don't do it. Don't burn your home down. You have to have a lot of other considerations to be made. Be put extra shielding around it, extra tubing, extra protection. 
it's going to make the sound quite a bit worse but uh, safety is more important than that especially if you don't know what you are doing then don't do this then just get some Belden cable or other UL approved cable that uh, you can uh, use for power cord but then does make uh, these cables that a lot of audiophile companies use as the base for their very expensive power cords and um, and you can just get that get like uh, two feet or four feet of them if you live here in the US put the marine coens on it and you get something that is is, is a, a decent power cord and you can use it and will be relatively safe as well so this is my long short video about uh, power cords and and my DIY power cord recommendation but uh, there's much 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 more to it uh, it also depends a lot on the area you live how much EMI RFI is there maybe you in, in your neighborhood you absolutely need a shielded power cord your gear is maybe you have to do some special things to to keep it hum free uh, this is I cannot recommend a single power cord that will work in every situation and work for everyone universally and and it also has uh, uh, parts which are everywhere available and it's 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 freely I mean relatively cheap <laughs> so so anyway one more last addition is that uh, if you are thinking about power cords uh, and how much money you should put into them first have the rest of your system down and when you feel that it is time to look into a power cord then just dedicate time money and effort into it and don't have second thoughts don't second guess yourself that, oh am I going to waste it or not have you ever tried different interconnects do you think it was worth the effort and if it was then then yes a power cord will be just as impactful and uh, if you already have a nice well balanced system then the effect of a big of a good power cord will be even bigger than what the interconnects and speaker cables did to your system for example in the case of my deck it is a very simple deck it's it's a ps audio ancient deck the digital link 3 i modified it quite a bit but still it's 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 a venerable very very basic very very affordable deck and that power cord change absolutely completely radically transformed that deck from a nice pretty capable okay sounding not anywhere close to modern decks but but acceptable very musical and fun and uh, with that silver power cord is just like okay I'm not even thinking about any exploration in the digital world I'm I could say I'm done with digital that's it I, I don't need to look for anything else so that that was what the, the difference was for me with that power cord in my case your case might be different but um, that's for you to experience and that's why our audio journeys are not so easy because everyone has different challenge different path different road and just enjoy <laughs> and have a wonderful day uh, thank you thank you Herman for your uh, question and uh, bye bye